Right, so in this video we're going to revisit an old project that you rather on a track that I did. Now originally I made that using my table saw uh, and just a regular blade. This was before I had a crosscut sled and it was in fact to help me make a crosscut sled. It turned out okay but not great. So this time I'm using Fusion 360 to learn the cam operations of Fusion 360 rather than actually making the project. Uh, sometime in the near future I'll do a much better version. It'll be a two-part uh, assembly rather than two-part video uh, that'll have micro adjustment and lovely things like that. So as I introduced in the last uh, CAD video or design video, uh, this is Fusion 360 and this is the model view. We have a sketch of what I'm going to make which is the uh, base plate for my router. Uh, but most of what we're going to do now is in the CAM tab. So CAD is computer assisted design and CAM is computer assisted machining. But in Fusion we need to set up, a, well we need to do a new setup. And the first thing you may notice is that the Z axis is going the wrong way if we were to cut it out on an X carve. So we select the uh, Z plane uh, and we can set the origin point as well to over there. You can also set up the stock sizes and for what I want to do that's actually fairly Good, although the orientation of the workpiece is a little off. So uh, we want to have the models up the top. I don't actually care about the overall thickness. I just want that cut out. Though I will, uh, I will say that it's the correct size just to make things a little bit easier. So one of the advantages of Fusion 360 is you can create your own tool path so you have a lot more control than what you do in easel. Now for some tasks easel is by far the best way because it's so quick to get through things. For other things it can be a little bit tricky. In our case it's sort of much of a muchness but it is a little bit easier to model it and then do the camera operations using Fusion rather than SVGs and exporting things around. So what we need to do is some adaptive clearing. So I can select all the faces for this particular operation. At this stage that's all I want to cut out. I don't care about the bit up the top because that's easier to do with drill bit and um, that's a little bit bigger than what the X-Carve can actually handle or my X-Carve I should say the 500mm model. Uh, so first we need to select a tool. Now it does come with a whole bunch of tools and I've pre-created uh, one that matches my machine. It doesn't have X-Carve or Inventables uh, end mills, it's more geared towards higher end machines that are much much bigger. However I am considering uh, creating a library so you can just drop that in and you'll have the same options as what would be presented in Easel. In this case it's going to be a flat end mill that's uh, an eighth inch wide. And that's disabled coolant as we don't need coolant for wood, this will be an MDF. But I've also set the speeds uh, to match what Inventables have in easel, at least for the most part. These are our selected surfaces, the pockets, uh, and these are various clearance heights, which the default I found are pretty good. We do want to do multiple passes, uh, don't want to go 10 more at a time, we'll do 1.6, which is what Inventables have listed for uh, MDF. And because I'm not super concerned about the um, surface quality, I'm going to turn off stock to leap. That would be a really good option if you were going to do a second pass with a ball nose end mill, which will produce a finer surface quality but isn't as good at roughing out material. Now that's going to generate the toolpath. Alright, you can see that uh, has the toolpath generated for the milling that I need done. Uh, I'm going to size this exactly uh, using the table saw so I don't really need it to cut it out. However, if you did need to, you can use the 2D contour, select the bottom line, and you can cut it out like that. Uh, we're still using the same in Milby. We can select tabs. Now this is interesting in that you can change the size of your tabs, but you can also set it to by point rather than by distance. So by distance is automatic and you can set that to be 
as far apart as you like. Um, so we'll leave it at that for now. And again, we probably want multiple depths rather than 10 mil of time. And you can see each line there would be a single pass going around. Now we can also reorder that if we want to cut that out first, we just drag and drop and that's the order in which it will happen. Uh, again, I'm going to delete that before we head off to the CNC to get this cut out. But we'll simulate that now so we can see what that would look like. What I like to do is turn on the stock so you can see how it's going to look during various stages. And we can speed that up. And it's slowly chipping it away. And also simulate the uh, main operation then. You can see down the bottom these red lines are indicating when there's going to be a collision with stock. In this case, I'm not certain it matters, but that could be an issue. I don't know enough about Fusion 360 to know whether that's something I should really be concerned about. Also notice when we hover over this timeline, it's going to take us 2 hours and 36 minutes, which is a considerable amount of time. So I'm going to go in and change some of these operations. It's good to get that preview before we actually cut it uh, so we know what sort of timeline we're looking at. So we just double click on the adaptive operation and we can see that the optimal load is fairly low so we can set it to 2.5 and what that means is it's going to cut um, a wider radius. It's not going to overlap as much. And since this is MDF I'm going to actually bump that up to 2 millimeters per pass. And it's going to regenerate that toolpath and hopefully we'll get that time down. All right, we can see that that toolpath has now been regenerated and it is a lot less dense. And this will obviously mean it'll be a lot quicker to uh, cut out. We can see that it's down to an hour and 15 minutes, which actually isn't that bad. Ideally, you wouldn't be using a quarter, well, sorry, an eighth inch bit for this, you'd use a quarter inch um, as it's all straight cuts, it doesn't need tight radiuses or anything like that. That is on my to-do list to get my uh, Makita trim router attached to the CNC, which will obviously make this a lot quicker. All right, I'm pretty happy with how that looks, so it's time to generate the code. We go up to post process, and we it, and Fusion 360 has the option to create a lot of different formats. We want generic gerbil as that is what is running on the G-Shield inside the X-Carve. I'm just going to call that router track and hit post process. It's nothing special, it's just the XY coordinates in a very generic format. Uh, and this is what ultimately drives the CNC. So easel in the background is converting everything into G-code, which then gets sent to uh, the G-Shield, which then actually sends it onto the motors. Before we go off to uh, actually cutting this out, I'm going to have another preview using a program called Odom Open Scam, which I think has a new name. I'm not in entirely certain. This is much like the preview option in Fusion 360, except being a uh, third-party program, it will interpret it a little bit better, I suppose, of what the actual output was. Um, we need to change our direction to cut forward, and we can see it's going to be all this material left behind. Uh, now, in this particular instance, that's because I set the overlap, or whatever it was called, to be a little bit too far. Um, for this project, it's not an issue because it's a learning exercise and it's in MDF, so in all likelihood, those ridges won't be left behind. Um, they'll just flake off, or I can smooth it out with a chisel as I'll have access from either side. So I'm relatively happy with that. So we're going to head down to the workshop now and get this cut out. 
All right, so we're using Universal G-Code Sender to actually connect to the X-Carve, uh, and just like in Easel, we've got buttons to move the uh, gantry around and move the spin spindle around so we can set everything. So I'm currently positioning it so it's at zero, 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 and then I'll reset it uh, in software so that it knows that that's zero. All right, now it's time to get the NC file or G-code file and load that into Universal G-code Sender. Just like the other programs, this also has a visualize tool, although it's just not quite as good. Ultimately, it doesn't need to be because you should be checking these sort of things before you get down to Universal G-code Sender. All right, with everything zeroed, it's really time to hit send and then it'll send row by row all the commands to the X-carve and cut it out. All right, so the machining is all finished. All I've done is vacuumed up, well, most of the sawdust, uh, and I've moved the machine out of the way. Uh, you'll see that there is about a five mil ledge here, or maybe, maybe three mil, uh, and that's because I forgot to take into account the zero position I had set in Fusion 360. I'd set it to that the stock was wider than the object I wanted to machine out. So because I cut this to exact size and then zeroed there, it started cutting out in the air and then um, you know, it, went too far. it didn't go far enough. That's not a big deal. Uh, the actual dimensions of this aren't super important. So I can just cut that off with the table saw or worst case, just chisel it out and it'll be fine. And that dimension is fine. That's exactly what I wanted. These are just a little bit too tight. Doesn't quite get down there. So I could finesse that with a chisel. Though uh, what I would have been better off doing was prototyping a very small section uh, on the CNC, making sure that my dimensions were right, and then cutting that. I did end up routing out another piece, this time just 50 mil thick, uh, as I don't really need another practice piece. That's a full size one. Uh, and this, this fits much better, so all it was was an issue with me getting one of my measurements a little bit off. Um, it could probably be slightly tighter tolerances, but with MDF I probably wouldn't bother um, to try and make it a little bit tighter tolerances. It's a very spongy material. Uh, more realistically, I'd add some cams in, much like what the track saw itself has, uh, and that way I can really snug it up to the exact size. So Fusion 360 I'm quite enjoying, uh, allowing me to go from CAD to CAM with relative ease. And as I explained in my last video on the subject, the parametric modeling makes it a lot nicer than SketchUp. And I was still a bit iffy about the sketch-driven designs. For some things, they seem a little bit more complicated, but the payoff is that modification down the track is very easy. In my next CNC video, I will have an actual project, although it's not going to be overly complex. Uh, but I will look at other software as well. There is MakerCam, MeshCam, uh, and a couple of others that are worth looking at and directly comparing them to Easel. Uh, and less so Fusion 360, uh, as there are some programs better at certain tasks. Fusion 360 isn't super great at very 2D based sketching, or carving I should say. Uh, so if you need some text cut out because you need some text cut out for a sign or for whatever, a label, uh, Easel has that down pattern. They do a great job of that. Uh, Recently, Easel has also added photo tracing, which is fantastic. Um, makes it quite easy to go from 
while a photo to carving that out very quickly whereas that's not something Fusion can do without first going through Illustrator or other programs to trace that. So hopefully this has been enlightening and if you've got other software suggestions that I should look at in the CAM, CAD or machine control world, let me know. Thanks for watching.